What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to He Who Fights With Monsters, book one. We're on chapter 97. Integrity is sexy. With Dean and Jarek stashed in Dean's family, with, with Dean's family, Jason decided he had time to stop at his lodgings before going to business. He was weary, heavy with the blood of the men he had killed, even after the crystal wash had cleaned it away. He took a long, luxurious shower, and with a fresh change of clothes, went for lunch with Farrah, Gary, and Rufus on their site. In their suite, Madame Landry had set up a lunch, sent up a lunch in the dumbwaiter, and they went out to the balcony. Since Jason had become an adventurer, they were seeing less and less of each other, and eating lunch in the sunshine as they looked out over the ocean was something they did whenever they got the chance. You missed a lot, Ferris said to Jason as they sat down. Oh? God showed up at Yori's clinic, Gary said. It was something to see. Dominion asked after you by name. What? Jason asked, half standing in his chair. Dominion as in the god. That's the one, Ferris said. That's bad, Jason said, setting back down. That's really bad. He seems to like you if that helps, Ferris said. No, that does not help, Jason said. That makes it worse. The others reaccounted to Jason what took place outside the clinic. Good for Jory, Jason said. He deserves recognition for what he does. And that Devone guy, turns out he's all right. He's wasted following that idiot Thadwick around, Rufus said. You should tell him about the other thing, Gary said to Rufus, who looked over at Farah, who shook her head in resignation. Cowards, she said. Jason, we're going away for a while. There's a big expedition, we're on it. Oh? It finally came out why the Ustai tribe came south. You remember the waterfall that shut off briefly the monsters you fought? Of course. Well, there have been other instances around the desert, close by. It's only been brief, isolated instances. Up north, it looks like the problem is much worse. Enough that the oasis is connected to several astral spaces are no longer able to support the nomad tribes. Something's going on with the astral space, Jason asked. That's what we're going to find out, Rufus said, picking up the narrative. We're going to relocate the Ustai back north, enter into one of the apertures, and investigate the astral space. That doesn't sound like a small expedition, Jason said. It isn't, Rufus said. It's massive. Daniel Geller is leading it, along with a handful of other silver rankers. Dozens of bronze, hundreds of iron. People who haven't been in a contract in years. The chance to explore the desert astral space is under the watchful protection of silver rankers. The city's most prominent families are falling over themselves to be involved. I can imagine, Jason said. Why am I getting a sense of hesitation from you all? The others looked at each other, all shaking their heads. Finally, Gary groaned in capitulation. You don't get to go, Gary said. It isn't just a matter of you not being invited. You were specifically excluded. Which is a load of crap, if you ask me. Specifically excluded, Jason said, his voice ramping up. The others braced for an explosion, but Jason let out a long, calming breath instead. I guess I can see that, he said. You can, Rufus asked, looking at Jason like he was a grenade that unexpectedly didn't explode. Look, it's no secret that I can be contentious when it comes to upper classes. I've caused problems before, and I've been raising very, very high, very fast socially for someone with no background. I'm guessing this is a test. If I show that I can take this quietly, miss an opportunity without kicking up a stink, then I pass. Jason turned his attention back to his meal as the others stared at him in silence. What? he asked them. We thought you'd have a bigger reaction, Farrah said. Making noise in the face of authority is kind of a thing for you, Gary said. Yes, but I'm coming to realize it doesn't get me anywhere. The snake slithering across the lawn gets shot. The one waiting for the toddler to wander near the tall grass gets fed. That's a horrifying anthology, but a welcomed measured response, Rufus said. We might just make a decent adventurer out of you yet, Jason frowned. Sometimes I wonder about that, he said, his voice heavy. I need your advice on how to handle something. Of course, Rufus said. They waited for Jason to speak. His uncharacteristic hesitation was concerning. I killed five adventurers today, Jason said. What? Gary asked immediately. Let him get it out, Farrah told Gary. Yes, Rufus said. Start at the beginning, Jason nodded absently. It all started with a contract I took at the jobs hall. Unlike the Geller family, whose seat of power was sprawling, an estate in, was a sprawling estate in the Delta, the Mercers had built their main residence as a manor on the island. 
a feat of magical engineering. It was a series of five towers set in a ring, built from a combination of the finest grade of green stone available and magic wrought glass. Each tower was five stories tall, interconnected by a network of glass walkways. One set of the walkways were curved, linking the towers in a circle. Another set were straight, connecting every second tower in such a way that seemed from above it would form the shape of a pentagram. Each of the walkways had a clear glass ceiling and a color-tinted glass floor with a different color for each walkway. The sides were open, but with invisible magic barriers in place. The barriers let in fresh air while shielding the inclement from inclement weather as rare as it was. It also prevented the Mercer children and pets from running off the sides. In the space between the towers was a park with trees and lawns showered with color as sunlight passed through the walkways above. In the center of the park was a pond where waterfowl swam happily about. Children were playing as parents or family servants watched on. They ran around, climbed trees, tossing torn up pieces of bread into the water to be gobbled up by ducks. Thalia Mercer was passing through one of the walkways when she felt a familiar aura from the park below. She moved to the side of a walkway to look down, then vanished, reappearing on the ground. She appeared next to a bench in the park where a man was sitting, eating a large sandwich. Jason, she said, sitting down next to him. Your ability to restrain your aura is quite developed for someone of your rank. Thank you, he said. I've been working quite hard at it. It shows. Jason placed his sandwich in his inventory, dabbed at his face with a napkin, then put that away as well. Lady Mercer, he said once he was done. I've told you, please call me Thalia. I'm afraid you've missed Cassandra. She's out preparing for the big expedition. Sadly, this isn't a social visit, Jason said. I'm here about a contract. I wasn't informed of your arrival, Thalia said. Have you been using my household guard to practice your stealth techniques? Your household guard only has a few bronze rankers, Jason said, and they all seem to project their auras as imposingly as possible. Not hard to avoid. I wouldn't be able to get into the building un buildings unnoticed, though. Too many high-ranking mercers and residents. That's the problem with having essence users as guards, Thalia said. Anyone with the skill to excel is unlikely to work as a guard, while well, anyone without essences can't be an effective one. I imagine you have a few quality staff nestled away. I've recently been learning about the Mercer name's ability to attract people into service. Oh? I assume you have a recording crystal projector we can use. Of course, she said. Follow me. Looks like I'll have to put you both down! Jarek's voice came out of the projection. Jason reached out and tapped the projector, bringing the playback to a stop. They were seated in Thalia's personal study, a recording crystal projector on the table between them. After that is something of a mess, he said. A fight, from my perspective, makes for a disorienting recording, lots of darkness and teleporting about. Suffice it to say, I took the man into custody. He's alive, yes. And this witness of yours, also fine, Jason said. I didn't want him mixing with his old crowd, so I sent him to stay with his family. They seemed quite happy to see him. It can be that way with the lower-end adventurers, Thalia said. A family can work for years, generations even, just to get an adventurer in the family. Adventuring is a dangerous life, though, and I'm not sure everyone has the training, temperament, or talent. Add on the family pressure, and it's hardly a surprise when many fall short. Some end up in the household guard of families like mine. Others end up working for criminals in Old City. Or a bit of both when they end up in your son's employ, Thalia frowned. It seems we have been a little too loose with the reins when it comes to my son. His father wants to give him the room to come to himself, while I prefer a more guided approach. We raised Cassandra my way, and Thadwick his. Marriage is a matter of compromise, after all. This recording of yours lay my, lays my boy's follies out on a slab. I have another recording, Jason said. Has word got out about the dead adventurers in Old City yet? From this morning? Not widely, but yes, that was you. Your son sent his lackeys to keep me from revealing everything. I have it all recorded. They didn't mention Thadwick at all, which I imagine was a point quite specifically made to them. If someone were to go round up the survivors, though, I doubt getting them to talk would be tricky, especially with my corroborating witness from the recording you just saw. He is safe, this witness? Safe enough. So long as your son is prevented from taking revenge, Thalia sighed. That boy, she muttered. I think his father and I need to have a very long talk. What are your intentions? For your son? Nothing. Regardless of what he's done, I know you'll protect him from anything within my power to do. I could kill him, but I know I'd quickly follow him to the grave. And you're willing to forgive? That's a bit much. 
I'm willing to be patient. A desire to stay in your daughter's good graces is a better shield than he could ever hope for. The most I can hurt the most I can hurt him is to collect more than enough evidence to give your family a headache, for which he is directly responsible. In addition to the recording you saw, I have copies of all the relevant documents and other recordings in of finding them all, in case something mysteriously happens to the originals. What inspired you to look into the Hall of Records? Where I come from, Jason said, we don't investigate with magic. When it comes to business fraud, you follow a paper trail. Once I heard about a monster known for death and destruction that keeps turning up without either, plus the highly regulated and valuable nature of the lumber territories, it seemed obvious what was going on. All I had to do was figure out who stood to profit, then prove their involvement. You must have needed help finding all that. I'm surprised the records official didn't come to us. It's widely known that we'll double any bribe. I didn't offer a bribe, Jason said. I just told her a story. It must have been some story. You're thorough, I'll give you that. The question is, what will you do with all this information? Frankly, I'm surprised to find you here. I've had you looked into quite thoroughly, and everything I've heard suggested you would start shouting this information from the rooftops. You seem to have a dislike for aristocratic power structures. I'm just some iron ranker, Jason said. If I lay out an exploitive land grab for your family, all it does is demonstrate your power when you, fa when you face no real repercussions. All you would suffer is the reputation hit of bumbling the affair to the point it went public. The headache, a headache, but one easily endured. You may be underestimating the damage to our reputation, Thalia said. Greenstone is a productive city with decent work for those who want it. If our reputation suffers too much, then we'll have to start paying more. People will move into the service of other families. We may have power, but there's always a balance. Yes, but the scales are rigged, Jason said. Be that as it may, this won't start some populist revolution. I need to go up a few ranks before I can start changing the world. In the meantime, all I can do is go for the best outcome I can see. Oh? If I make a big fuss and your family pushes back, I'll suffer. The lumber mill owner will suffer. Poor Dean, who I promised to shield from this, will definitely suffer. And when everything is said and done, you'll probably end up with the land anyway. You're not exactly painting my family in a positive light. You have power, Jason said. That's the nature of power. So for now, the best way to go is to see this quietly brushed under the rug. And what do you want in return? Here's how I see it going, Jason said. I make a discreet, a discreet report to the Adventure Society to close out the contract, straight to the office of the director to help keep a lid on the details. Your family compensates Lindover for the months of stalled production and all the preparations Clemenson made in preparation for a takeover get rolled back. Dean doesn't suffer any blowback for having come clean, and Jarek is quietly struck off the Adventure Society roll. You don't want him punished for trying to kill you. If he were put on trial for trying to kill me, the reason why would be an inevitable question. I'm not the kind of person that kills the minion when he can't kill the master. Losing the society membership is enough for me. What about the men you killed this morning? The ones I killed already had their chance, Jason said with flint in his voice. I let most of them go. Most of them? You killed five. How many people did you fight? Elspeth Arella will have the recording by now. I imagine she'll show you when she's leveraging your family. Thadwick gave, er, Thalia gave a wry smile. I dare say you're right. So you're willing to leave Thadwick to my family? We both know he's out of my reach, Jason said. But regardless of how powerful your family is, and my affection for your daughter, there's only so far I'm willing to be pushed. I'm running out of mercy to show your son. You know, my husband won't be happy about this outcome. He's been waiting to see some initiative from Thadwick. Then he should wait to see some morals, Jason said, his expression turning hard. He won't like compensating the mill owner, either. He doesn't have to like it, Jason said. He just has to do it. I thought the whole point of you taking this approach was to avoid provoking us. And you need to recognize that I'm not a doormat you can just walk over. I have a bottom line, Lady Mercer. You will do well not to cross it. Is that a threat, she asked, raising an eyebrow. Yes, she smiled. Mr. Asano, you have some backing, but you're ultimately an iron ranker lost in a world he doesn't know. Dahlia's silver rank aura pressed down on Jason. You pose no threat to me whatsoever, or my family, she told him. I imagine a thought very much like that was the last to pass through Cressida Devane's head before I smashed it open. Dahlia laughed, breaking the tension. You really don't flinch, do you? 
My daughter certainly knows how to pick them. All right, Jason. Lindover will be duly compensated, and Thadwick will be suitably chastised. I think it best that I'll see to my husband. I'll see to it that he doesn't kick up too much of a fuss. He dotes on Cassie, and her approval of you will go a long way. In my world, fathers don't often care for their daughters. Gentlemen, friends. The gods know my husband has his failings, Thalia said, but a failure to trust his daughter's judgment isn't one of them. They stood up. Very well, Jason said. I imagine you'll be pushing all of this onto Clemenson, making out he was behind everything in a way to integrate himself with the aristocratic backers. Are you all right with that? The man was clearly complicit and fetched out one of your son's lackey lackeys to kill me, so yes. Don't be too harsh on him, though. Not many can say no when the Mercers told him what to do. You make us sound like tyrants, Thalia said. That's the thing, Jason said. You are if you want to be. Jason was sitting on a bench in the park district, speaking to a recording crystal floating in front of him. It was sort of a business fraud kind of deal. There was a lot of waiting around, but I gave it a chance. But it gave me a chance to catch up on my reading. I was struck at this abandoned lumber mill. I was stuck at this abandoned lumber mill for three days with a guy named Kyle. Nice enough bloke, but really only likes to talk about wood. I suspect he's very good at his job, but not much of a conversationalist. My friends Farrah and Clive, I'm sure you've seen some of them in these recordings before. They've been foisting a lot of magical theory text on me, so I was able to get stuck into those. It's pretty fascinating, but I can't tell them that. They're rabid enough as it is. Hello, handsome, a sultry voice came from behind. Jason grinned as Cassandra slid onto the bench, leaning into him. This is one of the recordings you're making for your family back home, she asked, looking into the crystal. It is, Jason said. Family, this is Cassandra. We've been seeing each other socially. Is that how you describe it? Cassandra said cheekily. That's how I'm describing it to my mother, Jason said, taking down the recording crystal. Well, you impressed my mother, Cassandra said. Dad, not so much. And I'd watch my back around Thadwick. One of his henchmen tried to kill me, so yeah, I'll be watching out. What about you? Mother said you barely mentioned me, she said with a pout. I can't go around making decisions based on dark, gorgeous eyes, he said. Besides, integrity is sexy. He reached out for her hand as they sat side by side, entwining their fingers. You'll be away for a little while, he said. I don't like that you're not coming, she said. We can have a little fun on the trip on the way. We can do that when you come back, Jason said. I assume your family owns an obnoxiously large boat. We could have a sailing trip, a picnic basket, some wine, a small army of nautically adept servants. She laughed, resting a head on his shoulder. Something to look forward to. You can tell you can tell me all about your exciting adventures in the astral space. Deal, she said. Maybe you should go round out your awakening stones while we're gone, she said. Take the chance to blitz some one-star contracts. Get moving towards bronze. You have to get there before I hit silver, you know. My friends told me not to do that, Jason said. It seems there might be an unusual opportunity not long after they get back. Oh, she prompted. They're still not giving me any details, Jason said. It's something to do with why they came here in the first place. They're expecting another adventurer to arrive, a gold ranker, apparently. I've heard rum rumblings about that. Maybe you should catch that thieving thief giving everyone so much trouble. My uncle and the Adventure Society director have been quite contentious about it behind scenes. The whole thing seems sketchy to me, Jason said. High-profile jobs, the Duke and Elspeth Arella taking such interest. The whole thing smells of politics. You know, she was almost caught a few days ago. A group of adventurers almost pinned her down, but they were attacked. By who? No one knows, Cassandra said. They just slowed them down long enough for them, her to escape and fled themselves. Dressed in all black, they weren't even iron rankers. I told you, Jason said. Politics. There's a mess of undercurrents running through the whole business. You don't want to catch her. She's robbing from rich people, Jason said. I can appreciate that. Aren't you rich? Not compared to you. And that is the end of chapter 97. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have fun, guys.